Hello, and welcome to this edition of Shelby This Week. Here are some of the stories we have coming up. Let's take a look at what's opening back up around the township and the Macomb County Health Department keeps us updated on COVID-19 vaccines. We have these stories and more coming up on Shelby This Week. After being closed for quite some time, the Shelby Township Activity Center is starting to reopen to residents. The building is used as a senior center from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let's take a look. It's been wonderful to have faces back in here, familiar faces and new faces. And I know personally myself from being quarantined at home how difficult that is and how challenging it can be to find a purpose and a reason. The Shelby Township Activity Center is excited to announce that the Senior Center is now open with limited public access. We've been open for business pretty much all along. We really haven't had a time where we haven't been able to address the concerns of the residents, but it's so nice now to have people back in the building. The building acts as a Senior Center from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. And the reopening brings with it some of the seniors' favorite activities. We've got pickleball going on, we have exercise classes back up and running, we have walking, um, and it's, it's great to have people back in the building. And as a result of changing health guidelines, which includes the number of people allowed inside the building, it is noted that you must make an appointment ahead of time. So if you're at home and you are looking to make an appointment to come into the building, there are a couple ways you can go about that. On the internet, the, the township's webpage, you can go on to the Parks and Recreation Department. There's a tab for that for Senior Center, and it will sh take you to our online uh, Sign Up Genius, which is the way that we schedule people coming into the building. And for those not so computer savvy, you can always call the Senior Center at 739-7540 to schedule a time. Great seeing people face to face, not on Zoom. <laughs> it's so much fun to be with people again. I'm really glad to be back. I've missed a lot of people. Being quarantined and stuck in the house, the only people I ever see are my family. So it's nice to see old friends again. Great place to play, really enjoy playing here. So it's so nice to be back. We can get some of this winter weight off. And fear not, the Shelby Township PRM department has reimagined the stack experience and invested in new policies to protect the health and safety of our community. As a staff, we have changed our cleaning protocols and rapidly increased what we're doing. So we are now cleaning between uh, each of our classes and making sure that everybody who comes in is healthy by having them fill out a screening form. We also have deep cleaning going on um, much more often than we had in the past, and we've spaced out things. So we know that when we have uh, people coming in the door, we're not bringing everybody in at one time. We want to make sure that we're keeping that distance between people. We're also requiring um, mask use, as, as most you know businesses are, and we're doing our best to keep everything uh, even cleaner than it was before, but to keep everybody safe. The building is also open to the general public after 5 p.m. Stacy Sansaterra continues the story. It's been amazing. It's, uh, we finally have life back in here, and, and to see the smiling faces has been great. While things may look a little different, after 5 p.m. stack programming is back in business. It opens up our teen programs, youth programs, and for mom and dad and the children to come. So, of course, we're doing this with all the precautions that we have to from the state of Michigan. And, of course, those precautions include rigorous cleaning protocols as well as a new way of scheduling time. The big key to that is go to shelbytwp.org, go to the Parks and Rec website, sign up Genius. It's worked out wonderful. We put it in place because of the pandemic. But it's worked out so well, we may continue this down the road. We don't want people to drive up here and be like, oh my gosh, it's full, I can't get in. Well, sign up ahead of time and you'll be all set and you know you got a secure spot. A secured spot for some of the center's favorite activities. Per the state, indoor fitness classes are allowed, as well as indoor non-contact sports. So we have pickleball going on, we have uh, our volleyball programs. And Basketball is not allowed, but one thing we are doing is we have family fun nights. So if a family wants to sign up on Sign Up Genius and brings their family of four or five, they can have the gym to themselves for that hour. So we're thinking outside the box, but I think we're heading in the right direction here. And for everyone involved, heading in the right direction is an exciting prospect.
it's almost like a second reopening again. So now, in a lot of people, they missed the first part just because they didn't get over here. So it's like um, the sequel to the opening. So round two, we're thrilled. Shelby residents, if you haven't been here, come check it out, you're gonna love it. For Shelby this week, I'm Stacy Sansatera. The activity schedule changes weekly and can be found on the website at shelbytwp.org and click on Parks, Recreation, and Maintenance. With the Activity Center opening back up, the Shelby Township Senior Center is hosting a Valentine's Day drive through for seniors in the community on February 9th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. We're doing a Valentine's drive through where you're picking up a gift bag and those gift bags are a combination of things that have been donated and things that have been put together for fun like puzzles and hand creams and little treats and things. The drive through event is for Senior Center members only. To register, call 586-739-7540. The Shelby Township Library is also opening to residents. Arthur Schink has more. With the Shelby Township Library opening back up to visitors, you can expect to see some changes in the way things are done. But throughout those changes, you can expect quality service and safety to be priorities. We have reconfigured the library in, in pretty uh, stark ways. If you look around, you'll see that we don't have very much seating here. Plexiglass is something you'll notice actually all over the library. All of our public service desks have plexiglass that separate our staff from the public so that um, you don't have to, you can talk to someone face to face and, and not be too worried about that. You don't even have to hand someone your library card. You can actually just hold your library card up to the plexiglass and we can scan your card that way. When you're here for a computer um, appointment, then you are protected from the person who's sitting across from you and at least six feet from the person who's sitting on the other side of you. You'll notice that um, we've installed hands-free restroom doors, so you don't have to touch the handle of the restroom door. You can use your foot to open it. Something you might notice if you happen to visit the library would be the large amount of books being stored in bins here. It's just another addition of the library's seemingly ever-changing job. We are quarantining those books. That means if you take items home and they've been in your house and you return them to us, um, safety guidelines say that we must quarantine those items for at least 72 hours. So you'll notice that items don't come off your record right away because they are sitting in bins in the library being quarantined. They will be checked in off of your record as soon as they are safe for our staff to touch. But there are some things the Shelby Township Library would like you to keep in mind when visiting. Start with keeping your visits short. Um, when, we, when we open, we, we like to tell people that this is for grab and go service only. You're welcome to walk the stacks, you're welcome to browse and choose your own items. But right now, there, we are not um, allowing people to congregate. We don't have any tables and chairs for people um, to sit and study. It's just get your items and check them out. Please wear your mask. As soon as you come in the building, you do need to have your mask on. Um, it needs to cover your mouth, nose, and chin at all times in the library. If you're not able to do that for some reason, then let us know and we will provide you curbside service. We are open our regular hours. We have all of our services available, so if you're looking for tax forms or if you're looking to have a, a test proctored, we can still do that. Uh, we hope to be able to accept uh, donations for our friends of the library soon. That will continue with the um, procedures that we set up this fall, which is um, that we accept donations two days a week. So call ahead of time and um, make sure that we're accepting those donations. But otherwise, all parts of the library are open, our bookstore is open, um, and you can obviously wander around anywhere in the library. You'll see that there isn't, there isn't a whole lot of place to sit in here right now, but um, all, all areas of the library and all services of the library are currently available. For more information on the library, you can call 586-739-7414. Reporting for Shelby This Week, I'm Arthur Schink. To stay updated on the library and the township, visit shelbytwp.org and click on Libraries and Education. The Macomb County Health Department has released another update on COVID-19 vaccines. 
With the supply of vaccines not meeting the demand, Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle shed some insight on the disparities of the number of vaccines distributed between county health departments and total countywide numbers. Here in Macomb, 22,000 to our health department, but yet 67,000 have been allotted throughout the entire county. The only game in town where people can go ahead and get an appointment, actually call a phone line or go online, are health departments. So they're actually looking to go after these limited numbers that we're getting, yet somebody else has got doses available. And the question is, how are they getting out to the public? And it's not based upon appointment by you calling, they're reaching out. So my offer to you is this, you need to get a hold of your health care providers, maybe even the hospitals, and see if you can't get an appointment somehow through them because they're getting a substantial amount of these doses. We're not trying to pit health department versus uh, our, our hospital systems mm -hmm. here, but again, I think there's been an admission on behalf of the state that they opened it up way too fast. It should have been specific to our senior citizens. Our senior department has sent us a letter saying we need to refocus. We need to do what the CDC guidelines said and support those that are 75 years of age and older or 65 with an underlying health issue. That's the way this was supposed to go specifically if we have a limited number of doses. Senior residents are encouraged to contact their health care provider about the possibility of receiving a vaccination. For more updates, visit macombgov.org forward slash COVID-19. Still ahead on Shelby This Week, Restaurants in the community reopen indoor dining, and we check out some fun activities being offered for Black History Month. hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Hey, can you chop the pineapple? Chop the pineapple. Nope. I'm high. How about I wash off the grapes? Yes. Okay. You're already making good decisions when you're high. I want tacos. Will you drive? I'm a little toasty. Nope. I'm high. Let's order in. Don't make an exception when it comes to driving. If you feel different, you drive different. Indoor dining at restaurants has reopened. Restaurants will be open at 25% capacity and will have a curfew of 10 p.m. Contact tracing will also be used to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The state health department still recommends seniors or at-risk groups to avoid eating indoors. For more information on the gathering guidelines, visit michigan.gov forward slash coronavirus. To find local restaurants to support in your community, visit the Shelby TV Facebook page and check out our In Your Business playlist. If you own a business in the township and want to be included in our Facebook posts, email us at info at shelbytwp.org. For a list of local restaurants, visit our website and click on our COVID-19 business resources. With February being Black History Month, the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History is offering a month full of in-person and online events celebrating African American history. The museum will have a variety of educational and informative activities for adults and children. Some of the events include a Wednesday night virtual storytelling series, a make your own comic workshop, and a youth speak virtual stage. Black History Month is a time that has been set aside, a nationally recognized time, to actually explore and then really get invested in a part of the history of this country and this world as a whole that often doesn't get talked about. Um, so we get to spend 
four weeks, 28 days, sometimes 29 if it's a leap year, um, really delving into some background, into events, into people, into documentation that doesn't get spoken about on a regular basis. Many of the in-person and online events will be available to the public for free. To participate or learn more about these events, visit theright.org or call the museum at 313-494-5800. On today's Business of the Week, we visit before and after interiors to see what kind of unique decor and accessories they have to offer. People are so thrilled when they see it. Like, oh, that's a whole new piece. Yes. Before and After Interiors is a simple and sophisticated storefront located here in Shelby Township. We offer refurbished furniture. We upscale vintage pieces as well as home decor and accessories. have been a fan of before and after for about eight years when I moved to the area and I got to know the previous owner during that time. When COVID hit, my corporate job went down to part-time and I was able to explore a dream I've had forever. It's been a lifelong dream to own my own business. So the beautiful thing about this piece, besides it being absolutely beautiful, is it's very versatile. It is a dresser, so obviously in a bedroom, but because of its size, you could also use it underneath a TV or you could use it in a kitchen, or you could also use it in your dining room as a buffet, because it offers a lot of storage and it's the perfect height to put a mirror above it or a TV above it. I just have been blessed um, to have this opportunity. It's something that I've always wanted to do for myself, as well as I've got two kids. My son's 14 and my daughter's 11, and I really it's wanted to show them how important it is to have something of your own, to work hard, and to build yourself a successful business. So when you walk into our door, you will find vintage pieces that we pick personally and we refurbish them, whether it's by painting or just fixing them up and leaving them in their natural state. We just bring the true beauty of a piece back. You will also find home decor, whether it's something for your wall, tabletop, dressers, mirrors. You will also find unique pieces that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. So they look good. Mm -hmm. I think with all that detail on them. We are following all the rules and regulations that our governor is putting out. So our guests come into the store, they can know that we're wearing masks, we are cleaning and sanitizing, and also it's helped us because we're doing custom jobs. So we have a little bit of leeway to bring in custom pieces you may have that you would like painted and refurbished as well. So please come see us at Before and After Interiors 2. We're located at 48123 Van Dyke Avenue in Shelby Township. If you have a business you want to be featured on Business of the Week, call 586 254-7130 or email us at info at shelbytwp.org. Coming up next on Shelby This Week, a local art museum unveils a new exhibit. We take a look at Instant Family and we travel to the Humane Society of Macomb to see our pet of the week. I wonder who that could be. I'll be right back soon. Hey. Children can drown quickly and silently. About two-thirds of in-home drownings occur in the bathtub. Oh no! Call Visit cpsc.gov to learn how to prevent in-home drowning. We've always been interconnected, interdependent, united. And that's never been more apparent than right now. What we do together today will determine how we live united tomorrow. Stay home, stay strong, and if you're able, give for your neighbors who need help the most.
Macomb County's Anton Art Center has released a new exhibit showcasing contemporary artwork from across Michigan. The gallery comes from the 48th annual statewide fine art competition and will feature 50 works of art by 49 different Michigan artists. The exhibit will be available in person and online until February 23rd. For more information, visit theartcenter.org or call 586-469-8666. Today on Movie of the Week, Brenna Noyes talks about the film Instant Family. Hi everyone, I'm Brenna and for today's movie of the week we will be talking about the 2018 comedy Instant Family. Now it's rated PG-13 and it's directed by Sean Anders. It stars many celebrated actors including Mark Wahlberg, Rose Byrne, and Octavia Spencer. Instant Family tells the story of the Wagners, a couple whose relatives are convinced will never have children. And because of this, the Wagners look into adopting a baby. But they meet Lizzie, a rebellious teenager who impresses the couple. And they watch people playing video games on YouTube. We're not equipped for any of that. Hi! Just FYI, we can all hear you. Hmm? It's okay. Go mingle with the kitties and uh, don't give it another thought. Bye-bye. She was cool. Now, Lizzie also has two siblings, a 10-year-old brother and a 6-year-old sister. And the Wagners find themselves taking in all three kids overnight. We watch as the couple navigates parenthood in the hopes of bonding the five of them together as a family. The story is actually inspired by director and co-writer John Anders' real life. In 2012, him and his wife decided to foster and then adopt three siblings. And because of this, it was important to Anders to show an accurate portrayal of the highs and the lows that adoptive families go through. And even though the film isn't an exact copy of Anders' real life, a lot of real life scenarios ended up in the film. And I just made this joke of like, God, I'm starting to feel on the old side of it. Why don't we just adopt a five year old and it'll be like I got started five years ago. <laughs> and she immediately said, you know, I would really consider that. And I said, yeah, I was really joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> the film is definitely funny and extremely well acted. The comedic chemistry between Rose Byrne and Mark Wahlberg feels very natural. Not only are they funny, but they also play the emotional scenes extremely well, too. And the casting on the three children are spot on. I mean, each one brings a very different personality to the film. So you're immediately invested in watching their journey. And even though Instant Family is a comedy, it balances the dramatic scenes extremely well, too. And by the end of the film, you're completely moved by the Wagner family. Mom, oh, okay. Calm down, I'm going to take sure, okay? Here you go. See? Thanks, Daddy. Did you hear that? I just got my first daddy. Don't you oh suck! God. No fair! I want some of that. Hey, honey, Lita, can I help you with anything? No. No what? Are you talking to me? Who am I? If you're interested in Instant Family or any other movie featured on Movie of the Week, Call the Shelby Township Library at 586-739-7414. Now we go to the Humane Society of Macomb, where an adorable pup named Rochelle is looking for her forever family. Rochelle is one of my favorite dogs in here. I used to call her my girlfriend because I love her so much. And she is uh, about a year and a half. She's in a Staffordshire Terrier, so she is a pit bull. Super sweet dog. When she came to us originally, she was really skinny. You could see her ribs. But I'm happy to say we fattened her up, and she's doing really well, and we're trying to find a home for her. She's a little bit hit and miss with other dogs. Some she does real well with. Others, she's a little more selective, as we like to say. But she's a great dog, lots of energy. Since we put the weight back on her, her energy's really gone up, and we'd like to see that. But I think she would do good with kids and pretty much any kind of household. With her energy level, we'd want it to be an active family someone who's not going to be shy about taking her for walks, taking her out to play, a lot of interactive time with her to get that energy out. So as long as it's an active family, I think she'd be a good fit with just about anybody. This time of year, we are promoting the Warm Pet Project, which is taking place here at the shelter. We're collecting financial donations as well as supplies to make and buy um, shelters for dogs or cats who live outside. And it's been a really successful program. And if people are interested to learn more about it, they can go to the website, humanesocietyofmacomb.org. 
If you or someone you know is interested in adopting an animal from the Humane Society, call 586-731-9210 or visit humanesocietyofmacomb.org. That's all we have for this edition of Shelby This Week. You can always watch us online or on Facebook. Just search Shelby TV. We leave you now with scenes of our residents enjoying the snow. Thanks for watching and have a great week.